Let's talk about the 14 things you can consume to make fasting much easier. Realize that when you do fasting, anything that you're consuming other than water is going to break your fast to some degree. But these are the items that will have a very, very minor effect on your ability to get right back into fasting. And when we're talking about fasting, we're talking about lowering your ketosis. We're talking about raising insulin, that type of thing. And obviously the biggest thing that will break your fast is refined carbohydrates or sugar. Okay. And that's a high carbohydrate diet. Uh, protein also has the ability to break your fast because protein can stimulate insulin and a good portion of protein actually turns into fuel in your body. And this is why um, if you're doing fasting and then let's say you work out and you take some branch chain amino acids right before the workout during your fast, you will break your fast because that would stimulate glucose or collagen or bone broth. Um, those will actually increase insulin. Now, the two things that don't seem to have that much effect on insulin are fats and fiber. Fiber has a zero effect on insulin. So when you're consuming leafy greens, for example, that are very high in fiber, low in sugar, that will have a very minimal effect on insulin. But on the flip side of that, anything that you eat in general of any significance, if it has a certain quantity of calories, can stimulate insulin to a certain degree. So that being said, let's just go through the things that you could consume that will have a minimal effect on your ability to stay in ketosis and do your fast. Now, number one, MCT oil. Uh, this is very, very good, um, especially when you're starting out, uh, especially in the morning, maybe to put in your coffee because MCT oil will turn into ketones very, very fast. And then your brain can run on the ketones. Your heart can run on the ketones. You're, you can use these ketones as energy and MCT oil will allow you to go longer without getting hungry. Um, so that would be number one. Number two, coffee. Coffee does not have a lot of calories and it doesn't seem to break the fast very much. So coffee would be okay as long as you don't put sugar in it. Now, if you add an alternative sweetener, maybe a little um, erythritol or stevia or monk fruit, uh, that would be totally fine. But let's say, for example, you want to add whole cream. So a little bit of whole cream will have a very minor effect and I wouldn't worry about it too much. So coffee can help you fast longer. It can reduce hunger. Number three, exogenous ketones. Uh, another name for this would be ketone salts. So let's say, for example, you're fasting and you feel tired or you have brain fog, um, you could basically just take ketones and they go into your blood and then your brain will pick it up because if the brain has a choice between glucose or ketones, it'll always pick ketones. But if your body has not adapted yet and you haven't generated the ketones, um, you can end up with low blood sugar and you might feel kind of funky and tired. But if you provide the ketones for the brain, it will suck them up and use them for brain energy. So this could help you uh, feel better while you're fasting, especially with brain fatigue or lethargy. Number four, tea. Drinking tea can greatly help you go longer uh, when you fast, especially with the phytonutrients in the herbs that make up the tea. Number five, electrolytes. By taking certain minerals, and realize there's hardly any calories in here, unless you're getting the wrong type of electrolytes that has glucose in it, which we never recommend, but the minerals, the trace minerals and electrolytes will actually help your blood sugars and help your energy of your muscles, and it just makes it easier to do fasting. Number six, probiotics. Probiotics are healthy bacteria that can help stabilize blood sugars. All right, number seven, B vitamins. B vitamins will help insulin resistance. It will give you energy. So these B vitamins are needed at the cellular level, especially when you're doing fasting or ketosis. All right, apple cider vinegar is a, has a great effect on your blood sugars, and it can allow you to go a lot longer without eating. Now, if you're doing kombucha tea, a lot of times they have a bit too much sugar in that product. So you want to read the labels. If you find one with two grams, that might be okay. But even two grams 
uh, could be too much for some people. So it really depends on your, me your metabolism. But I will say that, generally speaking, this is lower amounts of sugar than other types of tea. And it has a good probiotic and a good acid to help you um, go longer, especially at night. Let's say you're, you want a replacement for beer or wine or champagne. This has a similar texture and carbonation that can act as a substitute. Number nine, fiber. Fiber does not stimulate insulin and it's food for your microbes. And the microbes actually make butyric acid, which is actually kind of a, in the family of ketones and that can help stabilize your blood sugars and improve insulin resistance. So if you were to do a concentrated green fiber or a wheatgrass juice powder, that usually should be totally okay because you get the nutrients from it. And if you're doing a greens drink with fiber, the fiber actually can act as food for your microbes. So that would be something that could enhance things because you're, it's almost like you're consuming a dehydrated form of a vegetable and you can even feel more satisfied with that. All right, number 10, erythritol. Um, so you can put that in your coffee, but erythritol has a zero effect on the glycemic index. So it gets absorbed in the small intestine and it gets in the blood and it gets pushed out to the kidneys unchanged. So it's a sweetener. So if you were to add that with the tea or the coffee, whatever, that would be fine or stevia or monk fruit. Um, these three sweeteners do not have hardly any effects on your blood sugars. Number 11, lemon juice. Now there is a little bit of carb in lemon juice, but a little lemon juice in your water is totally fine. And for the most part, it really won't break your fast for more than a minute, okay? But it can actually help reduce the risk of kidney stones and even gout or high levels of uric acid. All right, number 12, amino acid blend. So protein in general, will stimulate insulin, but there are certain blends of amino acids like the keto essential amino acids that have an effect of not providing fuel for the body, but mainly for recovery. So straight amino acid blend could have a great effect uh, right after you work out to give you certain amino acids without giving you that insulin spike. If you want more information, I put a link down below. All right, number 13 is sea salt. Uh, this is very, very important. I recommend the Himalayan pink sea salt. That would be uh, something that I really like. But sea salt actually can make you uh, actually feel stronger, your muscles. It can help with your energy level because if you're deficient in salt, you can have like the keto flu or a keto fatigue. So this could give you more energy. And lastly, number 14 is just water. Now, I'm not just recommending drinking massive amounts of water like gallons to somehow satisfy you, but I will say that when you're doing fasting, um, if you're a stone former and you develop kidney stones, you may find that your uric acid goes up and potentially you could form a uh, uric acid stone. But if you're drinking enough water, I'm talking about two 2.5 liters per day, you're going to pretty much dilute the urine so you're not going to form a kidney stone. So drinking more water can help you. Now, when you're doing fasting, you're going to find that you're going to get a fluctuation in hormones. And when you get this fluctuation, you may go through a little bit of hunger at certain points, especially in the morning at eight o'clock when you have a little spike of cortisol and you might feel like you need to eat if you just ignore that transient hunger, that will go away in most cases. But if it persists, then go ahead and eat. But if you're going through a little wave of, um, I'm a little hungry, and then all of a sudden it goes away, just realize that is just a hormonal flux. And you just wanna ignore it and push through that and go a little bit longer. All right, thanks for watching. So I wanted to say thank you so much for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. Now, if you have benefited from my information or videos and want to share it with the world, I would love to have you write up a success story. So click the link down below, fill it out, and let's let people know the benefits of healthy keto and intermittent fasting.